thought it would be a good idea to make a few minutes of film of uh, some of the cutter blocks, different cutters that I've made over the years. Uh, I think it would make a very good video. I have these two I'm picking up here on the blog post on heat treatment a few days ago. They're they contain about the most interesting, certainly all homemade cutters. There's that thing I found, well, I know from the workshop. Uh, there's a few commercial bits and pieces in. And this thing here I just thought would make an interesting filler for the corner. It's uh, a set of watchmakers staking tools. These are little punches that you use and they're for riveting together or extracting components. This is slightly outside my actual practical experience watchmaking is just something that I've read about only read about it um, I've still got a little bit of an idea so what have we got in the different blocks? we've got all sorts of things we've got uh, pull some of the mountain up look that thing has got a V section a V section to the cutting uh, tool this is interesting there's counter bores or spot face cutters that have a basically a, a negative zero or negative rake to them whereas I notice on some of the other stuff I brought home. Let's have a look around here. Um, let's have a look at this block here. Yeah, this is interesting. I've gradually cottoned on to the idea of when I actually file or mill the cutter. This is another little counter bore, a spot face cutter. You can file or mill, I'll probably file actually, so that the cutting lip, the cutting edge, actually has a positive rate to it. Now that's handy, that's my idea. It doesn't need a lot of metal to it, it's probably only for, well it could well be for steel, I don't know, I can't remember, well not particularly one. It's got a little sticky label on. What does it say? Can't read. <laughs> There's all sorts of things. Um, let me see, over oh, here, you learn by doing, that's the thing with this lock. There's only so much that is printed information, a lot of it you've got to find out yourself. Of course, the ink has long since faded away on this. That's like some sort of canvas ink, isn't it? And um, so this is how you learn about practical heat treatments. You actually make the stuff and see what. Well, here we are. There's a. This was for some electronic tooling. It's a seven millimeter across flat, seven mil AF hex socket drift. So that would be put in the fly press. It's tapped five sixteenth width, which is what we use on the fly press. That's from the Hardy days. Everything's the same five sixteenth width, I think. And so that's something that I would mill up. Looks as if it's milled. Yeah, it's milled up. Hexagonal form to drift into a previously drilled or machine hole. And uh, ooh, looking around, what have we got? So we've got these two and three bladed cutters. These are for the outrigger hinge. Right, so for the outrigger hinge, we've got three and two blades that are riveted together. And one of the problems we used to have, I have, is it was based around 16 gauge foot. The metal or the nickel silver, every time you got another couple of sheets in, little tiny sheets, would end up with a different thickness. You'd micrometer it and find, oh hell, it's two thou down. So by the time you get a build up of six pieces, uh, one, two, three, four, five pieces, it starts to matter. It well, it really would kaput. So there's one with a single blade. And uh, so what have we got? Looking along that block, a lot of those are very early bits and pieces. Um, what's this? These are press tool parts. Um, that's a rectangular punch. Good God, is that its die? Yep, there's a die there for actually knocking it out. Yep, that's the top face of the die. So something must have fitted up, fit over there that we needed to produce that uh, cutout. I can't remember if that was my stuff years ago. Got all sorts of funny things. Um, I can't really get that one out. There's one there that's. Uh, Quite an interesting piece of work. That's that one there. I wonder if that'll pick up the temper colours. I sort of uh, heightened my ability at these by all the ornamental turning cutters I've got, which aren't here. The OT cutters I would get when I was 17, 18, bought the OT lathe. So let's have a look at these things. We can get some of these out. This isn't pre rehearsed, it's all off the cuff. There we go, let's have a look at this. That's another one with a very small location pin. It's like a spot facing cutter. And there's another one that drills the machines down but leaves a projecting a projecting lug or boss. Um, let's have a look here. These are riveting tools. These are probably to form a 
a depression in sheet metal that would be it that would take a countersunk screw uh, more little spot faces these now this is interesting these are the actual brooches that are photographed on the heat treatment post because I've just read an enormous, enormous amount of twaddle in a magazine, a hobby magazine that really needed to be corrected. Now that's a, a tapered reamer. All handmade, whoops you boys, all handmade, all from silver steel. Look at me, it didn't fall anything else. I get very annoyed if uh, cutting edges get destroyed, they're not meant for that. And then that is a that is a tap. Oh, well, that was well, that was that'll only tap brass, so it'll last long enough. And uh, there's another brooch. There's another one of the brooches. Not pull these out. We don't want them to jar against each other, as would happen. But it's got a slot in. That's the one to produce the protruding internal tab on a brass washer set shape proof. So we've got there. There we go. We've run out of our two minutes, which we'll keep having to reload. Um, so we've got there are various things. There's a the one to produce the radius in the corners of whatever it's going to cut. Various counter bores again, spot faces, various different sizes. Um, there's another thing as well that's fitted to a with a counter bore to a rod, but that can probably be. I think it was one I made once where it cut in reverse. It cut on the upward stroke. Um, it was to clean up. I don't know a fabrication, a piece of machined aluminium, replicating a casting. Uh, but these are a decent quality. Um, that's a little. Now that one would probably be classed as a rose cutter. I would see that in F. J. Cam's book thinking that um, I would uh, make something to try and see how it works to see if it was any, any good so if we look at this, whoops, they shouldn't be together I don't want the cutting edges to jar and look on this block there's a interesting cutter let's refocus that's a sort of refocus there and that one obviously has to work down into a hole and to cut around to leave a boss opportuning round part that no doubt is a, a hinge or something to rotate on. I have a fair idea what that would be. So these are quite interesting. Here's another one of the brooches. This thing uh, obviously starts from a round hole here and then it, as it progresses through the material ends up being producing a hole that's got two flats on it. This is just made from a piece of silver steel. That's all it is. It's not um, anything like or, or even as sophisticated as O1 which is your your tool makers gauge plate which is needs a less violent quench and it's quite a few probably would be quite a few tapered reamers now this is a reamer I'd be playing around with to produce a parallel hole so in actual fact let's have a retake I don't know how that's going to focus so in actual fact there we go you can see the flap that's draw filed and honed on there uh, it would produce hopefully it's like a gun it's a gun maker's D bit in fact that's what that is it's a gun maker's D bit there's various other rose cutters for different size down it's an old fashioned idea that you run this down a piece of brass and you can make a screw very quickly that'll produce the diameter for a thread and uh, here's the little miniature brooch little tiny thing and these are little cutting teeth let's see if we can get that to focus better right we'll focus on the block of tools that should be better and uh, we can see that this has serrations in so again a brooch it's forced through stationary piece of material in the fly press so you start with a cylindrical hole and then this thing has been ah oh, a secret of photography so this thing has got little tiny teeth that's been, that have been turned on so you start with a cylindrical piece of stock and machine it taper so it's a larger diameter here Put your machine, your file or machine, yes, machine four flats on, so that as it progresses through the stock, it'll produce a square hole. It'll cut to the end, cutting out the corners of the material to give you a square hole starting from around once a little brooch that will be forced through. So while we've got it set to a decent, um, there we go. There's the the D bit again. There we go, that's far better. I'm oh, learning about photography now. I remember when I first got this camera, I went mad making little films. And 
I had a very short memory, so all the f memory on the camera, so all the films are about two minutes long max, so I'm trying to get through as quick as possible. So here's a brooch. We finish with a hole that has, that is basically square but with rounded corners. So you turn, this is turned in the lathe, made from silver steel, those are the holes for the tailstock centre, and it'll turn, and it starts round here, and then progresses so it finishes at a square hole with rounded corners. Obviously you've got to work all your sizes out on paper so you know what you're doing. Otherwise it'll be a mess. And uh, what else have we got here? Various different things I went through. I must have seen or read somewhere that uh, oil channels and machine tool slideways were cut with a little chisel, that sort of form, a section. So I made one, I thought that would be a good idea just to make it. Um, all about, I was just hungry, hungry to learn, hungry for to develop a skill. Um, the chisels, coal chisels for. There's another tapered ramer, there's lots of tapered ramers. D bits. Let's see, where does that focus? That's quite good. And um, just wanted to learn really. There's the, the coarse tap that would be used to tap brass. I know what that's for. I think that's part of a Zane Grey um, gear change assembly. So, oh, what else have we got? I've done that one. I've done that. There's another. A D bit. I'm sort of into this old style gunsmithing, clock making type approach to things. Oh, that's interesting. That's a little half inch end mill that's been ground down so you can actually cut T slots with it. That's been made, used to make little T slots. So while that's in better focus, we can look at things we looked at before. So a collection, I suppose a cross between watch, clock making, tool making. These things, were, these skills would be very common years ago. Oh yes, that's a little, very tricky little spot. Very uh, tricky little spotting for the first cut. There was a, let me see, a piece of whoa, aluminium, a machine to represent a casting. And I wanted to spot first and two inside a cross hole that ran across two projecting lugs. So I made this little thing that would pull on the upstroke of the drilling machine rather than the downstroke. So that's what that is. Um, so there we are. I've witted on enough. Right, now we know what this stuff is, we'll put them back in all in the, s in the steel cabinet. And have a look at them in another few years, probably. <laughs> That's an interesting article. It's uh, a three, bl three cornered. Can we see that? Three corners. And it's a tapered reamer to produce a tapered hole. Hardened and tempered to light straw by the look of it. And uh, I don't think this is the one, but this is very similar to how I reamed the taper hole in the trays for the three tray hinged container. So I made quite a few of those. Uh, they were a proper article, a product, to make my living by. It wasn't just done for novelty and they weren't just one-offs. There we go, that's a cutter we looked at before. There we go. Quite interesting little thing. Good piece of work in its own right, but obviously this, these are made to to make things, made to make things. Uh, let's have a look what other things we've got. Ah, there we go. Well, that's a a reamer because the flat goes down to below centre line, so it can start in a smaller hole and take two or three thousand to ream it to size. The only thing that bothers me is that why did I put that head on like that? I just don't know. There's another one of those reamers starts below. Now that's used as a drill. That's tried to drill from from zero. That's, that's curious. Can't remember what the hell for. And obviously even a tool maker you'd make your own which I've still got actually still use at work your own parallel pin punches and if you make your own screwdrivers that's how you learn what is good heat treatment. Now I've got one little small Allen driver. Now that's interesting. Here's a little tiny that is a hex drift. That is a hex drift. To produce basically something for an Allen key. And here's a there's another tapered reamer. I don't know if this is for a steam injector or what that one is for at all. Something to do probably with model engineering. It's very heavily into model engineering. Um I thought that's still people probably if we get a better look. These things must have a value. 
that's for sure. Not that by the way, we're not so certain. What else have we got? There should be another three three cornered tapered reamer. That's not because that's a cold chisel. So the tapered reamer somewhere for three tray hinge isn't here. Ah, oh, that upsets me. It'll be around somewhere. The obvious once we find it. Right, that's the end.